Today's review is sponsored by the new hit movie, Gone in 60 Minutes, the story of geriatric car thieves. Watch it, Alan, I'm shooting. The Last Shark. This isn't just any old shark. This is the last shark. But not really. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I absolutely love killer animal flicks. Alligator, Day of the Animals, Frogs. I just adore the genre. And I think we can all agree that the greatest killer animal flick of all time is Anaconda. I mean Jaws. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I love Jaws. I live on Cape Cod. You have to love Jaws if you live on Cape Cod. It's the law. And I have a soft spot for the sequels. I think Jaws 2 is a decent follow-up to the original movie. Jaws 3 is hilarious in a so bad it's good way. And there is some entertainment value in Jaws the Revenge. It's just not my favorite of the series. But what I like more than a Goofy Jaws sequel is a Goofy Jaws ripoff. And we've got a good one today that mixes my love of killer animal flicks with my love of Italian horror. The plot of The Last Shark is Jaws. It's that simple. A rogue great white terrorizes the waters of a small island town. There are differences, of course, but it's just an Italian remake of Jaws. You have the mayor ignoring the problem so he can keep a big event on schedule. In this movie, it's the annual regatta, where all the local youths participate in a big windsurfing race. Actually, he doesn't ignore the problem. He puts up shark netting, which doesn't work. Instead of a Chief Brody character, we have Peter Benton. He's a writer and not afraid of the water. He's friends with the local sea dog, Ron Hammer, who will be our quint equivalent for this movie. Sadly, there's no Matt Hooper character. Because the great white shark, you cannot scare off. Not this animal. Especially because he's had his taste of human flesh. It follows the same plotline as Jaws. People in this town get attacked by the shark, they choose to ignore it, more people get attacked, so Peter and Ron try to stop the shark. I can't bring myself to say that The Last Shark is a good movie, but it's without question so much fun. This is one of those so bad it's good movies. It has just the right amount of lame to keep you entertained. First of all, we gotta talk about the true star of this movie, the shark. Any Jaws naysayers out there who says that the shark looks too fake in that movie, take a look at this mother. It's so cheesy and wonderful. The mouth barely moves. The best parts are where you see the shark swimming underwater. It's clearly a bath toy. They mix these images with stock footage of real sharks. You have this rubber shark swimming around and then cut to obvious stock footage. It makes for a good laugh. I would recommend watching this movie with your friends. It's one of those more fun to watch with a group kind of movies. Get some popcorn, some pizza, and alcohol if you drink. The movie opens with rock and roll music playing over this guy windsurfing. It's a fine opening. You get lulled into the music and watching this guy flipping around on his board. That sets the cheesy tone for this movie. Some of the kills are simple people being pulled under the water kind of kills. Then you have ones that are more gory. Then you have the moments where the shark goes at somebody and they just explode out of the water. <laughs> Then there's the scene where our heroes, Peter and Ron, are scuba diving to try to poison the shark. 
they go into this underwater cave, and then the shark starts moving rocks in front of the entrance to block them inside. Ridiculous, but great. There are quite a few subplots scattered throughout this movie. You remember the scene in Jaws where those two fishermen try to capture the shark with a hunk of meat? That happens quite a bit in The Last Shark. You have quite a few characters trying to get the shark by luring it in with slabs of meat, but they just end up feeding it. We got all this stock footage of sharks eating, and damn it, we're gonna use it! Unlike in Jaws, the mayor here gets a little more proactive and tries to kill the shark using a helicopter. It's never clear what his plan is. We see him on the helicopter, once again trying to lure the shark with meat, but we don't see any guns, harpoons, or explosives. So what exactly was his plan here? Oh, that's right, he wanted to fuck up. Then there's another shark hunter who's brought into the movie during the final act. We had this reporter who was doing a documentary on the mayor, but once the shark showed up, he wanted to do a show about the shark. The plot gets a tad complicated for a simple Jaws ripoff, and I love it for that. <laughs> The movie is about 88 minutes long. When watching bad, low-budget movies, there can be a lot of slow, boring moments. Just people walking around for the sake of padding out the runtime. But when you have a good bad movie, like The Last Shark, there's a good pace to it, and you get plenty of silly moments to keep you entertained throughout. <laughs> The Last Shark was directed by Enzo Castellari. He, like many Italian filmmakers, got his start in spaghetti westerns before he moved on to Eurocrime. This was the genre where he excelled, giving us movies like High Crime, Street Law, and The Big Racket. These are not so bad they're good movies, they're just good movies. In the 1980s, he moved on to the next big genre in Italian cinema the post-apocalyptic sci-fi movies. He made a movie called 1990 Bronx Warriors, which is this weird mix of The Warriors and Escape from New York. He also directed a war movie, Inglorious Bastards, which inspired Quentin Tarantino's movie of the same name. Not a remake, it just shares the same title. The Last Shark is a true piece of Italian cheese, but that's not the end of our dive into Italian animal-based horror movies. Next video, we're taking a look at Wild Beasts. That movie is batshit crazy in all the right ways. But until then, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of about eight. The kills mostly consist of people getting eaten by sharks, which is what you expect in a shark movie. We get some limbs being bitten off, and folks getting straight out eaten. The shark is fake looking in a fun way. It's a clear cash-in of Jaws, but that just makes it all the more entertaining. There are plenty of cash-ins out there that are well done. Not so much this one, but it's charming. The pacing is good, with not too many lulls between the silly moments. There's really not much more I can say. I can't bring myself to give this movie any any more than a 2.7 out of 5, but don't let the low rating stop you from watching it. It's so bad that it's a blast. Jaws fans especially will get a kick out of this flick. Get together with some friends and some beer for a good movie night. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching and supporting my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do here, or give it a thumbs down if you don't like what I do here. Leave a comment down below. Are you a Jaws fan? Do you like fun ripoffs? Let me know. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Here's a sneak peek of our next movie. What the hell is that? Elephants! You're gonna want to watch this one.